This is a dramatic reading of the Enigma, written by yours truly, Clarence McDaniel. <clears throat> An Enigma, a day in the life of Claire Graham, by Clarence McDaniel. I don't want to do this, but for the last ten damn years I've had to deal with people wanting to know more about me. You get what you want, but it's going to be boring. Sorry about that, but you brought this on yourself. I've been different for a long time. Not like those, she's not like other girls tropes you see in 90% of books and movies. I'm something not completely human, and I used to think it was a pain in the ass. I wish I didn't have to live with it, but while I was in college, I realized I could do something with this. Anyway, here's how it happened. I woke up at 7 a.m. with my wonderful dream that I had a tea party with Darcy and sweet, sweet Andre. Cursing the day for snatching that wonderful moment away from me, I dragged myself out of bed and shuffled through the large amounts of books and tea in my room in order to get to my stuff for the day. Damn it, I thought to myself. I just got to the part where Andre brought the kittens. Oh, fuck nuggets on a stick. Where the fuck did I put my backpack? Luckily, Alex doesn't keep her hearing aids on at night, so I didn't have to deal with the awkward situation of disturbing her peaceful slumber. The Hulk could have been having a jam session in our room, and it wouldn't have woken her up. She's just a sweet, maniacal dumpling. After getting all of my crap together in a sort of decent manner, I strolled down to the commons to have breakfast. It was a pretty damn early morning for most people, but Anne and Helen were there to keep me company. While they were arguing about if Wotan or Brunhilde uh, could win in a bear fight, uh, Jared and Erica came meandering and attached to each other like a pair of incestuous conjoined twins. Since Jared is a clum clumsy doofus, he tripped over Erica's feet, causing the two of them to start falling. With a flick of my wrist, the entire scene stopped in midair. It was like being alone in a field of statues. Everyone was frozen in time. When most people think of a scene like this, they think it's going to be some dramatic sci-fi moment of wonder, but it's pretty uh, boring. It's kind of like being trapped in a painting. It's nice to take in the view, but it's the action that makes it interesting. In this case, it wasn't even interesting in motion. Well, I will admit that Helen and Anne look pretty epic in the middle of their argument. Shit! Damn reflex is getting the better of me, I cursed. I've been trying to be more conservative with my powers. It can wear me down for after a while. I looked over at the eminent mess Jared and Erica were about to make. I shrugged to myself and mumbled, as long as everyone is frozen, I might as well save those boobs from embarrassment. I got up and hesitantly rearranged them into a standing position, similar to the way claymation artists reposition clay figures for a film. I still find it kind of funny how easy it is to move people. I gave my work a quick inspection. Everything seemed to be fine, aside from the fact that Jared was making a face that looked like he was both constipated and puking. Considering the fact that he makes these dumb faces all the time, I decided to just leave it that way. Like always, I recalled what position I was last in and resumed the normal course of the day. They looked a little confused, but carried on like normal. Now, okay, so I should probably explain what's going on, because as far as I'm aware, most people can't do this kind of stuff. The bottom line is, is that I have the power to stop time. It's not like the movies where I would have fallen into radioactive waste or would have been given a magical potion or something else really ridiculously cheesy. It just kind of showed up after I had a really bad run with a broccoli spider. Don't ask. Anyway, I got superpowers and I didn't really know what to do with them. 